Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the studio tonight where I am hoping to paint whoop this guy or these two guys up here. Uh, these beautiful emperor penguins. Um, it's been so cold. I don't know, at my house, I got struck by a, a cold streak all of a sudden. It went from literally 85 degrees one day to a high of about 45 the next and uh all i could think of was freezing and uh as i was trying to pick out a picture of what to paint uh <laughs> penguin kept coming to mind so i found a penguin and uh let's get ready to paint it gonna go over my supplies <coughs> excuse me um the paper that i'm using here is fabriano um studio watercolor paper my whoop there we go my paints over here are m gram paints and the brushes that i'm going to be using are my king art brushes these are the 90 20 brushes and i like them very much so i'm going to go ahead and get started with this and i'm going to start by uh painting the center of this larger the the male penguin here with that nice kind of soft i might want to get a little bit of color out of here a nice kind of soft uh, ochery yellowy uh color on his body just going to mix up a little bit of color here Oh, I think that's going to be nice. It's going to be a nice color for him. And I'm going to get him wet. And I'm going to paint at least part of this wet in wet. Nice part about the majority of this painting is that if, it go, if I go over the lines a little bit, it's not going to matter a whole lot because uh, the dark's on here are black and uh, we won't be able to see the paint underneath so um, that's that's good for us but I want to just get a lot of this color on here would love to say I know a lot about penguins but I don't most of what I know about penguins comes from happy feet <laughs> so uh just let me apologize for not knowing much about penguins to start with other than the fact that they're usually pretty cute and every time i go to the zoo that's one of the first exhibits i try to to uh, find so i can check them out the zoo or the aquarium i guess living in california i do like to go up to the monterey bay aquarium it's a pretty cool aquarium and see the uh, see the animals up there. If, if people haven't been, it's a pretty cool one to visit. Plus, you'd be coming to my state here and helping to support our economy, which in uh, in today's day and age we can use it. See a couple of people coming on and going off here. Um, if you're here. You have any inclinations? Say hello. Let everybody else know that you're here. Let let everybody know that it's not just me here all by myself uh, in the studio, which I don't mind being here all by myself. I paint by myself a lot, so I'm kind of okay with it. But people start talking. Other people are likely to start talking as well, and then we can engage in some good conversation we can all have a good time together it's one of the reasons i do these live streams is so that we can all have a little fun and learn maybe a little bit about watercolor painting so there we go a little bit of color there i'm gonna just darken this ever so slightly I see this guy's got a little bit of extra color right up here. Just what I'd call under his chin. If I can just get some of this color on to begin with, I'm going to try to do that. 
a little bit of stronger color. I'm going to go with a little bit of Azo Orange. Susie Moon, hello. Thank you for stopping by. It's great to see you again. Hope your day is going well. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of just straight um, what is that? Nickel Azo Yellow? What do I have on my palette? I think I have Nickel Azo Yellow. Aaron, I'm going to blend this out. What do you call a penguin in the desert? All right, Thirsty's coming with some jokes again. What do I call a penguin in the desert? All right, um... Let's see. What do I call a penguin in the desert? Uh, tourist? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know. What do I call a penguin in the desert? I'm assuming it's not like a tourist or something like that, right? Um, you know I'm terrible at jokes. What do I call it? I don't know what I, I don't know. Um, I, can't, I can't even hazard a guess. What what do you call a penguin in the desert? Lost. OK, lost. I was close with tourist. But now. <clears throat> doesn't. Uh, doesn't South Africa. Isn't a lot of South Africa. Um, a desert. Isn't that a desert climate? Or especially up to like Madagascar? Or on the other coast up to Namibia? It's a lot of desert there. There are penguins in the desert, I believe, aren't there? I thought penguins were one of those animals that had really conquered just about every, uh, every climate and ecosphere out there. Really kind of industrious kind of... Uh, kind of guys, but like I said, unfortunately, I don't know too much. All of my, <laughs> my knowledge comes from lost. Oh, or lost uh, from happy feet. How sad is that? Um, Susie or a penguin. You call, you call a penguin in a desert still a penguin. That's true. That's true. All right. I'm going to mix up my own gray. This little, this little baby one here. But while I'm waiting for some of the rest of this to dry, we'll put another coat on there. Really like how that looks right now. But while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to mix up some uh, gray for this guy. And I'm looking at him. And I'm trying to figure out what colors to use. Let's just do a little test here. Do I have a spare sheet of paper I could use? I think so. I'm going to try a little bit of... Um, Cobalt blue and a, a bit of azo orange. Ooh, maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's that's not a bad gray. I want to use I want to use my own gray and I want to have some blue in it because um, it's such a cold environment here that I think the blue is gonna help just cool everything down and then the the orange and the yellow the pop of color they're really going to come out what is a penguin's favorite mexican food penguin's favorite mexican food um fish tacos <laughs> final answer fish tacos Wait, maybe that's my favorite food is fish tacos. I'm going to go with a fish taco. Susie, you want to take a guess at it? Oh, Liza is here. Hello, Liza. Thanks for joining. Always good to see you. Bur burrito. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I should I should have I should have seen that coming, shouldn't I? Something tells me I should have been on to that one. 
a burrito. Yeah, I had a burrito for sure on on Sunday when I was picking this out, uh, this image out. Like I said, it was it was seventy some odd degrees on Saturday. Wearing shorts. Sunday, just the opposite. Cold. Chilly. Uh, cold, right? Who? What am I talking about cold? Where I live, it doesn't really get cold. I say that because I know that there are people who live in climates where it really does get cold. <clears throat> and... And where I live in California is truly not one of those places. But for me, it's pretty chilly. <laughs> Liza, what's going on? I hope you had a good day today. Thank you for joining. Just I've just made my own gray to paint this little guy here. A mixture of cobalt blue and a little bit of... Azo orange. Oh, I forgot to paint his head. How can I do that? I want to have a gray with, with a lot of blue in it. Oh, I don't. Yeah, because his head is black. Uh, because I want to. I want it to seem cold. I want a cold color on here. Right? I want it to be cold. I want it to feel like it's chilly. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that off of there. He's got a little, a little bit of white fur underneath there. We have frost warnings in Maryland tonight. <laughs> oh, I says thank you, doing well. Got our, our first today. Your first snow. Whew. Okay, I think I'm a little ways away from snow. If I'm being honest with you. But uh, it's chilly nonetheless, right? It can be it can be chilly without snow. I'll I'll tell you, I, <laughs> I'm the biggest sissy. Um, it gets down to actually, if it gets down into the 30s or even in the 20s, it's not bad. It doesn't bother me that much. But if there's any wind, oh, the wind is just just freezes me to death and unfortunately um, when we have winter we have wind I got up I got up this morning and had to fight my way to the car probably <laughs> coming up my driveway there was a, probably about a 30 mile an hour wind blowing up my driveway it's a little early for a winter um, wind <clears throat> but uh, I say I'm <laughs> I'm a sissy about winter. My brother, a couple of years older than me, we grew up in the same house, you know, a couple of years apart, but dealt with the same weather. I don't even think he owns a winter coat. He just does not get cold. It's like not something he's capable of doing is ever getting cold, and I can't figure it out. <clears throat> My son is the same way. It'll get down into the 30s here where I'm at at night in the winter. And we'll take a walk at night and um, I'll be freezing and have a, a coat on and a vest and some gloves. And he'll just have like a t-shirt and I make him wear a jacket. And he always has it unzipped and half hanging off of him because it's too hot. <laughs> Wait a minute. Liza, Liza. Uh, you might, you might get a, um, spring in, uh, in July now. <laughs> Come on, it's supposed to be heating up. The world is supposed to be heating up, isn't it? I thought we were all having hotter, warmer summers and winters, everything. I don't know. I don't know. All right, is he, he's still a little, a little wet. Okay, uh, I've got to I've got to do a little bit of 
yellow right in here. And then we can move into painting a lot of this guy dark. And I've, I'm trying to think about it. I've been thinking about it. Do I want to paint him black? Or do I just want to paint him dark and make my own dark color? I talk so much about not really liking to paint things black. This might be one exception uh, because penguins are really dark. They're super dark uh, in color. And we just can't, we can't get away from it too much. Like, well, actually, we have no spring. We got from winter to Hades to really. <laughs> it's been happening for years. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I mean, not really. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I remember, you know, growing up in Ohio, it would get uh, warm up. You'd have one or two warm days in the spring and then it would be cold for another two weeks and you're like ah really what is going on why why does it have to be like that and then you would have uh in the yeah black can be deadening uh and then and then in the fall you'd have the same thing it started to get cool started to get cool started to get cool and then all of a sudden you've got one day where it's I don't know, another 80 degrees or whatever. And it's just the, the temperature variation jumps around so much. Uh, I'm looking at this guy. I think, I think I'm going to have to use some black, but I'm going to mix, I'm going to make some of, uh, some dark here. I'm going to use some Payne's gray. And I'm going to use some sepia, and that's going to give us a nice dark color. I'm going to get out a little scrap piece of paper here. Right? I think that, let's look at the difference here. That's my dark. And... Actually, there's not too much difference in this <laughs> by the time I look at it. Ooh, but as it dries, I can see a big difference. As this one is starting to dry, I can see this is black as defined by um, M. Graham right here. And M. Graham's black is a warm black. And then here's the one that I mixed just from sepia and Payne's gray and look you can just see look it's starting to um, granulate a little bit there actually it looks kind of nice I think we'll go with that I think we'll go with my puddle here that will allow us to uh, just have a nice wonderful gray and if we want to make it a little bluer in a couple of places or if, even if we wanted to add a little black in a couple of places or if we wanted to add I'm, I'm trying to look at him. It does look like um, down his flipper, there is a little blue in it, which is why I mentioned that. But I, I don't know. I think, I think I'm going to go with this, with my own here. And I'm going to... I want to get a nice transition of this color right up here. He's got this one area that just has this wonderful gradation of, of dark colors as I look at him. I'm going to try to stay in the lines here a little bit. Would ultramarine blue add some life to your black? It probably would. Let's take a look. 
Let me get this on here real quick and then let's take a look at that and see if it will. We're going to get this wonderful gradation. I can probably even pull this out a little bit further. I don't even know if you guys can see. Of course, it's upside down. So you're probably going, oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. There we go. Look, it's got this wonderful, if you look, let's see if I can do this. Now, I don't have a pointer here, but you can see uh, right in the middle of his neck, right? There's this beautiful gradation there, right in this area of his neck. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. So let's just see. A little bit of black here. And if we just charge in a little bit of blue to that. All right, there we got a little bit more blue. My blue is a little dehydrated. Well, there's a little bit more life in that. And then there's the two we did before. There's a lot of room here. Actually, the, the this black from M. Graham actually is kind of a nice black. <laughs> Let's see. Let's talk about black. Is, is there a way to make it not be not deadening? Uh, yes, there is. Don't use it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you have to mix it with something, wouldn't you? Um, I like the, I like the making my own there. I think that's a good idea. Let's let this dry here. I'll put it right here. We can just, there we go. We can just see it. Well, you can definitely tell the difference between just black and that blue black. Right there's a there's a lot more to this, uh, and while we're waiting for that to dry, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue uh, down the flipper of this guy here, the black that we've made. I think, I think, uh, Liza, the real answer is um, you have to be cautious with, with black, right? Uh, if you're using it in a large area and it's out of place in that area, it can totally be deadening. Absolutely, it will suck the life out of whatever you're painting. If you use it in a smaller area, I have to move this for a second. If you use it in a smaller area or kind of in the appropriate level, right, as, a, as an extreme low light, um, I think, you know, maybe, um, maybe less is more, then I think there's a lot to be said about it in it. And it won't really deaden what you're doing. But in that instance, it'll just, just take the color down. I don't really think the, the, the deadening is a result of just being black. Uh, I think it's the, the result of having too much is really what, uh, is really what the issue is. And it's and with a color like black, it's unfortunate that it's easy to get too much. It is super easy to get too much um, on, and then it's too hard to get rid of it. I don't think black itself uh, has any issues. You know, I'd hate to, I hate to think that one of the colors in the toolbox 
that we all use is is not good, but I think it's the overuse of it that uh, causes issues. There we go. Look at this. I put a little blue in there. That makes it look different. How are we doing over here? Still not quite dry, but definitely, definitely cooler here than that warm black there. Let's let that continue to dry. And his head and his beak are pretty dark. I'm going to try to be bold and put some colors on. So this happened today to me. So many of you know, or some of you know probably, that the area I live in, California, um, this springtime got some torrential rains. And one of the things that the torrential rains did was <laughs> it got me to spend a night at work because I couldn't get home. <laughs> hmm. Fun. Um, so it, it rained and it rained and it rained and it really came down. And um, I, I mean, in a hurry, it came down. And they closed our campus where I work. <clears throat> I started sending uh, the employees that work for me home and I stayed to make sure that all of them got out. And then I decided it would be okay for me to go home. And uh, that was a probably, literally, that was about five minutes too long because um, two cars ahead of me, they closed the freeway. <laughs> And I was stopped about, as the crow flies, I was stopped about three quarters of a mile from my house and couldn't get to it because the freeway was a lake between uh, me and my house. If, I'd a, if, I'd a, if I had to stay on the freeway... Um, about a mile and a quarter from where I was stopped. And uh, so anyways, what that, what that, all that rain did was it soaked our ground and caused all of the plants around here to grow. We live in the, a pretty deserty climb here and Usually the weeds aren't too bad. Got some deserty weeds, but they're usually not too bad because uh, there's not enough moisture for them to grow all that much. Well, with the with the rains of this spring, it really uh, things really started growing and. This afternoon, just before lunch, I got a report that the highway was closed again because uh, because it was on fire. <laughs> it, was, it was a giant fire. Everything that had been underwater before was now basically on fire now. <laughs> so there was... There was a little while this afternoon I was wondering if I was going to get home tonight. But I made it, as you can tell. Okay, there we go. That's, I'm going to leave that like that, that dark, uh, and not mess with it too much. Uh, and I'm going to come back into my yellow color here. And... If I look at this guy, right, well, let me say this. How many times do I say, well, we really need to have um, some definition on what we do, right? We need to make, we need to make uh, so many things round. I mean, I hate to say this, but this guy is basically a cylinder, right? If we think about it in just abstract shape forms, 
which means we need some shadow on this side and we need some shadow on this side to really make the center of it pop out and make it look like it's round, right? So I've got some of this color that's still in my palette here. There was a little bit of brown here already. I'm going to use that. Sounds awful, Michael Clyde joke. <laughs> I, I, drove past the, I drove past the freeway. The, the fire literally burned right down to the freeway. All black. All the hills black. Thankfully, uh, the firefighters were there in no time and um, were able to extinguish the fires when I... So that happened about lunch, uh, lunch time, noon, local time. It took them about four hours to put it out. And when I came past at, at five on my way home, there were still fire engines there on the hillside. I'm assuming waiting to see if there were going to be any flare ups or anything like that. <laughs> It just gives you a little pause, and you're like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Are we going to do this again? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to bring this color out a little bit more. Maybe like that, and maybe, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I'll drop a little bit of blue on there, this side over here. I definitely want a little bit of blue over, over on that side. So, I'm going to make my own over here, my own color over here. Mixing some ultramarine in with a little bit of that color. That's already on that palette. And I'm going to drop it in over here. Yep, it's grayed it down. Totally fine. See how far up I can or should take this. Probably way up like that. And then I should start blending this out a little bit. I don't want to get a hard edge on it, but I do want to have a little bit of color. Come on, ultramarine, work with me here. Blend it too much, I won't have any darkness in here. We'll fix all. We'll fix this down by the leg in a second. I know I say down by the leg, and at the time I said it, the leg is actually up. <laughs> I get that. Oh, we got nine people here. I'm going to make the call again. If you're here and you're new, uh, don't be afraid to uh, say something. Uh, let me know that you're here, who you are, that you've, you know, just that you've tuned in. Uh, I like talking to people. I do the live streams because the interaction is, is fun and it makes my Wednesday evenings uh, so enjoyable. I hope it makes it enjoyable for you. Hit the, hit the thumbs up. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, thank you. Hit the thumbs up. Um, I like to make this interactive or as interactive as I can. Uh, so, you know, if you have an inclination, say hello. No pressure, but I'm usually pretty friendly about stuff. And uh, if you want to ask a question, feel free. I don't have too many limits. I'm willing to talk about just about anything. Anything that won't get me thrown off of YouTube, <laughs> I'm willing to talk about. You can ask about me. You can ask about my art. You can ask about... My day job, I guess. If you want to know about that. You can ask me about my art journey. 
all, anything you want to know, basically. All right, this is just a shadow for this little guy here, and I can't quite, i got to be a little careful, I can't quite get his uh, flipper in there because, uh, because I've, I've put that on. I've got some wet over there, but we can do a little bit of it. Because it's wet, it's going to blend in a little bit, and I think that's going to be okay. We can come back and just tack in a little bit of that, that color at, right at the end. And, oh, let's see, this is, this is penguin color here, right? Now I can come back over here and I can put this flipper on. Does anybody have any good penguin facts? I've admitted earlier in uh, in this stream, I have an extens extensive knowledge of of um, penguin facts, all of which come from the movie Happy Feet. So uh, you know it's not very extensive at all. Let's see, Guillermo, I like your joke about the black color. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on one second, Guillermo. <clears throat> I don't want to... I don't want to cough right into my microphone here. What, <laughs> what was my joke about the black color? What? Oh, I don't know what I said about the black color. I like I like black. I don't have a problem with black. Uh, I think it just it's just, it can be very overpowering though. It's you we. <clears throat> it's one of those. <laughs> sorry, it's one of those colors that can just take over a painting whether you want it to or not. And and I, I think this. Might be one of those cases where you can kind of get away with using as much black as you want, but in many cases, if you use too much black, it just, it will take over everything and you'll end up with something that can easily go from looking quite vibrant to looking quite flat. And a flat painting is not what we want. We want a nice, vibrant watercolor painting that when people look at it, they're, they're going to remark about how vibrant it is. Maybe how nice the brushwork is. Or that they, they can't see any brushwork because you've done such beautiful washes. Look at this little guy's head. These guys are so adorable. I said earlier, uh, I go up to the, you know, I, I live in California. I go up to the Monterey Bay Aquarium every now and again. I used to go, I used to take the kids up there and go every year. But we just, we don't, I guess we've done it so many times. We haven't done it in a while, but uh, one of the things that was always so nice up there was the penguin display. And I don't know if I just like birds, you know, and they're basically a bird and birds do funny bird things. You know, I do like chickens. They kind of remind me of chickens in lots of ways. Um... But birds do funny bird things, and I always, I always make a, a, an, a, an effort to get over to where they are so I can just sit and watch the penguins for quite a while because they are riotously funny uh, to watch. And there's just kind of a, you know, there's just kind of a freedom to uh, the penguins, even, even though they're 
you know, basically living in a box for years and years and years. You know, they people come and, and see them and, and give them fish and whatnot, but um, they just kind of, they, they seem free and they're out there and they're doing all kinds of stuff. Um, it's fun to watch them. I like watching. <clears throat> I like watching them. All right, I'm going to just add on some extra color here. Right, some areas where I think there needs to be some additional color. And I'm going to actually blend most, if not all, of this out. But I want this to be in these general areas here. He's, maybe he's got a little something right there. All right. Just tip of my brush, barely wet. I'll scrub this a little bit to blend this out. It's going to help to you know, give a little form to this guy. He's all fluffy in, in bits and parts here and there. So I don't want to have just a flat color on him. The Galapagos penguins live at the equator. Fun fact, there you go. There you go. That is a fun fact. So then I would say... So if they live at the equator, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm wrong a lot, so I'm not worried about it, does that mean they have a wider habitat than humans have? Because we live... We certainly live at the equator, but uh, these guys' habitat goes further south than ours, right? We all live on, or we all have an outpost. I guess we don't, I guess you could say we as humans live on Antarctica, like they do. But they're further south than us, right? I think that's right. Oh, look, I've I got my brush too wet, and now I'm fighting. I'm fighting some tide marks over here. I don't want to fight tide marks. I'm really drying my brush off to try to to not get those to stay. Oh, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, fluff to him. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the best word to to describe him is. I think there's a little bit of fluff on him there. Let's see. While I'm waiting for some to dry, I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush and I'm going to grab some of my Pyrol Red and this guy's got a lot of red on his beak here. That was a happy accident. <laughs> it was a happy accident. It was a happy accident, and if I had happy feet, I'd get up and dance about it. But you guys don't want to see me dance and sing. Actually, maybe you do because you you need a good laugh. 
<laughs> Maybe you do, but I don't think you do. <laughs> you don't really, but you might. Let's see. His head here doesn't have enough dimension on it, right? We This was some of the gray we had mixed up here. Try just to give him a little bit of color here. Oh, please see your questions above uh, in caps. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Hold on a second. Let me... I hope it's not a question about dancing or the movie Happy Feet. Let me see what you got. I got to scroll up here. In caps, Michael, please see my question above. Shadow for under the chin. I like the. Let's talk about black. Is that what we're. Liza, is that. Um... Is that what we're talking about? Your question in black? A way, way, ways to make it not so deadening? Is that the question? And shadow for under the chin. So, um, with the blue black, great. Would ultramarine... No, that's Susie. Add some life to it, yes. Some. No. I don't see a question in all caps. In caps. What, Liza? <laughs> it might be easier if you just told me what your question was again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't see it. What's your question? I'll, I'll get it. Um... It's under someone who posted name Guillermo. Okay, I, I under that I see you sorry. You sorry. I, I'm Liza, I'm sorry I don't see in shadow for under the chin. I don't see the question. I'm not I'm not trying to be difficult. I just don't, I don't see it. While we're trying to sort that out, I'm going to put in What is your greatest strength? What is your greatest strength in watercolor and what would you most like to improve in? Okay. Okay. See, now that's, those are questions I can answer. So I think if you're going to force me to answer the question, I think my biggest strength in watercolor is that uh, I can do a lovely graduated or graded or valued wash. Right? Nothing to do with nothing to do with color, nothing to do anything like that. Uh, if I had to answer that question, I would say I can do a lovely graded, graduated, variegated wash. And I like to do it. Um, Margaret is here. Hello, Margaret. I like doing washes. I always have. I don't have a reason why. But when I started doing watercolors, uh, I would, you know, take a sheet of paper like this and I would, I would draw rectangles in it of different widths and different lengths and all sorts all over it. 
And then I would start filling them in with uh, graded washes to see if I could do them this way, if I could do them that way, if I could go from full to nothing, if I could go from full to half bleed, if I could go from half to nothing, right? If I could do it over an inch, if I could do it over three inches, if I could do it over eight inches. Um, I love doing washes. Uh, to me, they're fun to do. And I think I can get a pretty good wash anywhere I want to, whether it be just a very small area or whether it be a large wash. Um, and I, and I think that comes out in a lot of the work I do. Maybe not quite so much on this one. Uh, but I think on a lot of my, my work, it shows. And what's the thing I need to improve in most? Um, patience. <laughs> patience for myself patience for paint on uh the the paper patience to be able to put on layer after layer after layer uh patience in not rushing through and feeling i need to do something at a at a particular time um just little things like that and there are a few tech other techniques that i would like to do more with but i think that in general if i if i go a little bit more slowly i can do a little bit more and i can do a little bit more better margaret uh you have a question do you have any watercolor artists whose style you like i do i do i do i do uh i have two that i very much like um actually maybe three uh that I very much like Two of them are similar and one is not, and neither of them paint anything like I do. Okay, so, uh, so I'm just going to throw that out there, right? The first one is, um, the first one is Alvaro Castagnet. Uh, Alvaro paints unbelievably beautiful impressionistic paintings uh, he does so with complete reckless abandon he throws color on the page and almost seemingly doesn't care how it goes on how it looks how it contrasts how whatever I say seemingly, it looks like that as you can see him paint. He's got a couple of videos on YouTube. He's a he's a very contemporary artist. He's probably one of the biggest artists, watercolor artists out there at the moment. That's a little too dark, isn't it? Dang it. Um, that's Alvaro Castagnet. If you live, he now lives in Perth, Australia, I believe. Um, he's from Argentina originally. I uh, got married and moved down there. He went to school in a number of places, uh, Chicago being one of the places, a, sh a art school in Chicago. I'm just going to darken this up ever so slightly since that's darker. Uh, and like I said, completely impressionistic, uh, totally loose, not totally loose, uh, but, uh, just unbelievable paintings, uh, when you see what he does and how he does it, uh, I'm, I'm staggered at how he does it. I, I've tried and tried and tried. Uh, Liza, you're probably going to ask if I could try to do some on here. I, I'm happy to. I've tried in the past. Uh, I probably will never stop trying to paint like that. Um, I just haven't been able to replicate it yet. It's 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 uh, outside of my comfort zone, and so it's hard for me to wrap my mind around how he does some of it. 
Um, the other guy is impressionistic also. You can see him here on YouTube. He's got an interesting style. I can duplicate his much more closely. And he, uh, he seemingly likes to paint with very few brush strokes. Uh, his name is Tim Wilmot. Uh, he, he said in English, or British anyways, uh, watercolor painter. Um, his videos are usually about an hour long, and you can see him do everything from explain his, his reference photo. He'll draw it, and he'll paint it all within an hour. Uh, I think his, um, much more than Alvaro's, are hit and miss. I still think they're all fantastic, uh, but watching his approach and seeing how he does everything is uh, really interesting. <clears throat> That's kind of juxtaposed with Gary Tucker. Gary Tucker? I think it's Gary Tucker, uh, who is a watercolor artist out of Boston. Gary Tucker. That doesn't seem right. Let me see. While I'm explaining this, I'll see if I can find what his name is. I think I can find it. Uh, he paints with almost as many uh, brush strokes as he can possibly. Yeah, Gary Tucker. That's it. That is his name. Uh, he doesn't do any pre drawing, he does all of his painting uh, on his paper and will actually draw in watercolors the, the, his reference photos. And he'll do it with like a sepia or a, a burnt umber, burnt sienna, something like that. Very light. And then he just builds it up and builds it up and builds it up and builds it up. So his paintings have, will literally have hundreds uh, of layers built up on top of it by the time he's done. Um, so uh, I, I mentioned three there. The two... Um, Tim Wilmot and, and Alvaro Castagna, I very, very much like. The other guy is uh, Charles Reed, uh, and he does, he does all kinds of things. He's most famous for painting people in a very loose style and with a very few brush strokes and with very few pencil strokes. He's uh, able to capture a mood of somebody or... Uh, an interesting thing about the position that somebody's sitting in or taking. Um, and so I, I, it's, it's amazing to watch how he builds that up. So those are three that if I had to say, who are my, what was that? Was it, who are my favorites? Uh, who, oh, who are three whose style I like? Uh, those are those are three that I would choose right off the top to talk about. Margaret, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> um, you think I'm amazing at gradients? I'm I'm good. I'm never gonna be uh, one of the, you know, the greats of all time or anything, and that's okay. I to I'm totally fine with that. Not necessarily trying to be. What I try to be is, you know, more or less true to how I see things or how I feel that uh, I should be painting. I think there's a little bit of difference in nuance in there. Um, Look at the orange to pale beige on the parent penguin here. Oh, here? Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That one's nice. <laughs> I'm going to pat myself on the back. That one's nice. I like it. <laughs> some of it's good. Some of it's bad. Um, I think I'm pretty good at it. I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I, I like I said, I used to do so many um, uh, small washes like that and gradients. I still like to do that. If you look around my studio and you you pick up any kind of random sheets of paper, you're going to see 
you're going to see ones like this with gradients on them uh, just because, you know, there are, there are, I will admit, there are paintings that I do that I don't like and they don't make it to see the light of day, but they all make it to um, be reused in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so what I'm doing here is whether I like the color of uh, this penguin's head or not, right? I, I mentioned that probably the uh, shadow was a little too strong. And in order to lessen that shadow just a little bit, I can make uh, the color on his head a little bit stronger. Right, and then that'll push that um, that'll push that shadow away a little bit and make it seem a little bit lighter, maybe than it than it really is. I don't want to come too much. Uh, towards towards this really warm spot, I guess where his ear is, I don't I don't really know, because I want that to stand kind of on its own. Give just another shot right up here, like that. Anyway, Margaret, I thought that was a fantastic question uh, about the artists. So if you, if you like my answer for any of those and you want to take a look at uh, any of those artists, uh, they're all on, on YouTube or have things on YouTube. Uh, Charles has passed away, I believe, a couple years ago. Uh, so you won't, I don't think you'll find any, any, well, you shouldn't find many, anyways, new videos. His daughter was continuing to do some, to uh, publicize some of his work, uh, but I don't think you'll find too much there. Um, let's see, Margaret, no, I'm sorry, I think, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, Michael, do you paint landscapes? Um, <laughs> Margaret, you have a list to look up or study. I do paint landscapes. Um, I actually... Right, I, <laughs> I do this all the time, right? I, I live in this beautiful little area of, our, of, of the United States. As I said, of our country. I don't know where everybody's from. I, I know a number of you are from different areas of the United States. And I, I say that, you know, kind of a little, not necessarily tongue in cheek, but with a little grain of salt because I was talking to a coworker about this, that I've traveled to lots of places and so much of the United States is, is beautiful. We, have, we are blessed to live in a country that every corner of it has beautiful places in it so i don't want to i don't want to you know toot the horn of where i live too much and say oh this is this is wonderful and you know everything else is kind of whatever because that that's not that's not it by any stretch but <clears throat> the the area that i live i think is is awfully nice and i went out on Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning, went for a walk and I walked, uh, I don't know, six miles or so down to the ocean and took a number of pictures and said, well, maybe I'm going to find some time before the end of the year to do some paintings of these. Uh, so you might see one or two paintings on here of the area, the central coast of California, where I live. I especially like, I've been out to Zion, a Zion National Park a number of times, and I have absolutely fallen in love with Zion National Park. Uh, I would have to believe it's pretty hard not to. <laughs> 
if you've been through uh, any bits of Utah, Northern Colorado, um, no, I'm sorry, Northern Arizona, Southern Colorado, those areas, um, the desert, what I would call the desert Southwest with, you know, a lot of, a lot of red rock out there. It is, it's stunning. And I've probably got five or six or seven videos on here of places in or around Zion National Park that I've painted. Oh, there we go. That's a nice flipper, I think. I think I'm going to get a little bit of a back run here, and I'm going to quash that by just putting in a little extra color. In fact, I'm going to bring it most of the way down and around. I, I'm sorry. I, I know... <laughs> I know you guys have said a few things. I'm I'm kind of at a <laughs> kind of in an area I don't want to don't want to stop because if I stop it's going to dry too much and if I have to go back it's going to make it harder. <laughs> and I'm trying to hurry so I can get to some questions. But I'm trying to answer your question at the same time. Here we go. There. Oh, look. Oh, oh, well. Mm, all right, hold on. Don't look yet. <laughs> Don't look quite yet. Okay. I know nobody else is going to look at that and see that line and go, oh. That shouldn't be like that. Only I would see that, but I guess that's what I need. Okay, cool. I like that. Okay, um, let's see. Um, Susie Moon, what do you like to paint? And Margaret, Susie, you're asking me what I like to paint. Uh, I like to paint birds. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> uh, I've got a thousand birds that I've painted uh, everywhere. I like to paint food. I don't know why food is fun to paint for me, but I do like to paint food. Uh, I guess those are the two biggest things. Margaret, I started with painting a realistic fish okay for my boyfriend and then painted two more so that would so it wouldn't be lonely on the wall perfect um you uh, eliza your niece wants to take you to zion go let her take you <laughs> zion is beautiful oh my lord let's see um uh susie you paint flowers okay cool uh and margaret you're a beginner you don't paint too often but mostly these days you do landscapes since they're easy to find simple references for yeah but you don't even need to find references <laughs> most of us can go outside i so i've thought about this a lot too at one point in time uh oh i don't have them hung up here i tried to paint all of the you know touristy buildings in town so, like the famous coffee shops or other eateries, all the restaurants, the city hall, whatever else I painted. I, I painted all kinds of things around town. Um, you could easily work, whoops, I was flipping over there. You could easily work that into landscape paintings. Um, if you don't live in a countryside area, which is more traditional for landscape paintings you could always paint more of an urban landscape those are always kind of cool to do and the the nice thing about it is you know for for 
for whatever it is, you typically don't have to travel too far. You just have to have a little bit of an eye to see what's out there and reference it uh, kind of nicely. Um, let's see. I'm not great at them, though. Susie, you, you too. I'm assuming you're talking about uh, landscape paintings. In order to keep painting, even 15 minutes a day, yes, yes, never stop. <laughs> oh, and Liza, you're thinking this looks good. Uh, there are some good botanical painters on YouTube. There are some wonderful botanical painters on YouTube. Here, I'll give you one. Anna Bucciarelli. B-U-C-C-I-A-R-E-L-L-I. Um, that's one, I don't think I've watched a video of hers in years, but I have her on my, uh, playlist here. What is this? My subscriptions. Um, and she does beautiful, uh, botanicals. I say there's, uh, let's see, Guillermo, do you prefer, prefer to get a warm and cool color of each primary to mix your own colors? And do you buy convenience colors? Um, uh, that's a great question. Dana, hello. I'd like to see you paint some simple birds and some beach landscapes. Yeah, I might have some beach landscapes <laughs> coming up based upon the pictures I just took. Uh, Guillermo, yes, uh, check this out. Ah, I'm, I'm waiting for this for a second. I, this, I think this is starting to come together, though. Look at, look at how good uh, this looks up here. We've got a little work to do on, on this guy. We've got a little bit to do on his eye here, and then definitely some shadow down here, but, but he's getting there. So um, when I set my palette up... Right, uh, turquoise notwithstanding, the neutrals up here notwithstanding, and this purple notwithstanding, right? Um, so I set this up so that I have a so I have warms and cold blues, I have a warm and cold green, I have cold and warm, cold, cold and warm yellow, and orange is different, then I have cold and Warm reds, right? I guess that's a warm red. That's a really warm red. But this is a cold, cold one. And then I have the other colors that you put in there, right? These are all neutrals. This might as well be a neutral. It's pretty neutral, but it doesn't fit necessarily with any other color. It's not really a true yellow. Plus, it's opaque. I kind of set it off to the side. The violet I put in there because sometimes I don't want to have to make my own violet. Although... Alizarin Crimson and um, Thalo Blue make a wonderful purple. Um, my Olive Green and my Maroon Perylene, I almost never use straight. These are only for mixing. The Azo Green is one on here I've never really used. I thought I would use it a lot more. But yes, when I put my palette together, I specifically set it up to have warms and colds of each so that I could mix it and like where I was going with it. Did I buy all of those colors for some convenience? Uh, not necessarily. Oops, I mixed that in the wrong palette again, or tray again. Um, a number of them I got because, well, you know, quite frankly, I got them because they were on sale. Uh, and I got... Well, uh, well, I uh, I started with a sepia that I got because it was on sale, and then I liked it, and so I kind of bought my own. But I didn't necessarily buy them because of any convenience other than they were convenient. Right? They could have been they could have been any color, and I, and I would have grabbed them. Um. You want to see my... Oh, Susie, you're saying Anna is great. Anna Bucchiarelli. I don't know how you say her name. She's wonderful. And she's super nice. Um, she's usually 
responsive to uh, things that you post on there or questions you ask of her. <laughs> Probably more than I am. So if you ever do run into a question about something and need to ask, she'd probably help you out. I don't know if if you're if you're into name dropping. I don't know if dropping my name is going to help you out a whole lot. I'm sure she doesn't know who I am. There we go. Oh, we got a little bit of uh, something going on with this guy now. He's looking a little better. Have you ever seen any paintings done by Paul Clark? <laughs> it's Liza. You're saying I'm not a fan of Viridian. I I, <laughs> I do not like Viridian. Uh, Paul, I do not know who Paul Clark is. Um, um, please explain uh, Paul Clark to me. Who's who is Paul Clark? I think I will do a search. Um, I may have been hiding under a bush for a long time. I don't know. Is he is he an artist on on YouTube or is he a like a contemporary artist? Is he somebody I should know? Paul Clark. I don't. The name doesn't ring a bell. Lots of times, if there's an artist who is a contemporary artist but doesn't necessarily do watercolors, lots of times I know of them because my wife is a, an actual <laughs> an actual artist from an she went to an actual school to um, study. Art, and so she knows how to do lots of things that I don't know how to do. Paul Clark is a, a British landscape artist. Is he? He's not the guy who does everything in like three layers, is he? He's on YouTube. Paul Clark. Okay. All right. I'll check out Paul Clark. I don't I don't recognize the name. Ah. Uh, oh, I just dropped way too much water on here. I don't recognize the name, but I'll I'll definitely check him out. You see my reference photo. Oh, look. How can I forget? How can I forget? Oh, look. Oh, 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 he's look, look at that eye. He just now all of a sudden he's got a little attitude. <laughs> he's got a, he's going like, hmm, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's see. Could you have your wife on sometime? No, <laughs> no, nope. She has no interest in being on my streams. Sorry. <laughs> now look, this guy, I got a, I got a reference photo over here. I got to zoom this way in to even see exactly where his eye is. I drew it. Let's say it's somewhere right about there. No, my wife is actually not a painter of any sort. Um, she is more of a sculptor um, and I don't this is just not her kind of thing. Um, she would she would never want to be in front of a camera anyway. <laughs> I'd never get her in front of a camera like this. That would be that would be that would be something to try to get her to do. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's any chance she'd ever be coming on here. Let's see, there's something in this. 
photograph here, like a, like a foot or something over here. I can't quite make out what this is, but I don't think it necessarily matters. I'm going to make it a dark shape over here. Could even just be some dirt, and then we and then we got a big shadow to put on the side over here. I was thinking about putting on some uh, just a wisp of blue here and there to uh, show some additional snow. I don't know that that's really necessary. Got a good shadow color going here. My wife actually had a um, um, a YouTube channel of her own. I'm not exactly sure how she pulled this off. She had a YouTube channel for a couple of years, and I'm not I'm not gonna she wouldn't want me to say what the channel is or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that. I'm, but I am gonna say she had a channel for a couple of years. Pretty successful channel. And I don't know how many videos she had. She was not in one of them. <laughs> she was not in one of them. Like, how did you pull that off? She, would, she even did a few live streams, and she was not in it. All you would ever see were her hands. I'm like, how, how, do, you, how do you get away with that? <laughs> Natalie, you're saying these penguins are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I did, what I want to do is... I want to make sure my pen works this week. There we go. And I know you can't really see his eye here, but I'm going to highlight that eye just a little bit. I want it to stand out a little bit. I want you to be able to see it just ever so slightly. Um, wow. I'm looking up there. This guy's looking pretty good. <laughs> I like him. I don't know how much more we need to do on this. It would be fun to, see, Liza, you're saying, it would be fun to see some of my, my wife's work. So, we have one of my wife's pieces of work. Um, it used to be hanging up in the hallway in our house. It uh, is now leaning against the wall in the hallway in our house. Uh, I think it weighed about 140 pounds. It's about three and a half, four feet wide and four and a half, five feet tall and weighs a ton. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it was a cool piece. Um, so I'm looking, uh, I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm stalling is, is what I'm doing. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to, I'm going to give... Let's see. This was this was orange and blue to make our gray, right? I'm just gonna throw in just a touch of Payne's gray in there. So if you look at that reference photo, when you look at the, I'm gonna show the reference photo because it's tiny up there. I want you to look right down here. There looks like there's a line right down there. So uh, look at that photo. Right? It looks like there's a little darker bit right there, kind of maybe right on the bend, on the bend, right? <laughs> on the bend. Uh, so I want to try to... Get something right in here and maybe right across the top of his feet. I know what I tried to do before. Let's see if I do any better with it this time. 
dry off most of my brush, not much there, and just almost scrumble this out. Right, just let it do mostly what it wants to do. I don't need to do too much with it. It's going to go right around that foot and right around this foot. Get it right, he'll probably do a little bit of dancing. So I think that kind of more mimics with that little line there or mimics what's actually in that reference photo. I'm going to put a little bit of extra dark right up here too. All right, there's a little bit of shadow underneath his head there. And if I can just muff, muss this up just a little bit. Try to do that. Is there anything else I really need to look at here? It's my last, I'm trying to do a last little hurrah here for anything that might need to might need to get done before we call this done. <laughs> Anything that needs to get done before we call it done. If that made any sense at all. Whoop, whoop. And I don't know that there needs to be too much more. I, the only other thing I was looking at is right up here. So let me bring the reference photo up again and look right up here. So you can see on the side of that neck, there's a dark area up there. And if I bring it back here now, right, I have a demarcation of his neck that goes up here, but there's a little darker patch that continues in this area that really makes that even more. And I don't know if I really need to put that there or not. I also don't know if I could stop myself <laughs> from doing it. I can, pro I can probably get that on there. Let's see what it looks like. Grab some of this. Of course, if it doesn't work, it's not my fault, right? Let's, let's all agree to that. Just right off the top. It doesn't work. It's somebody else's fault. Not clearly not mine. I wanted to stop and not do this, but it was goaded on. <laughs> right, I have I have three three uh, tubs of water up there, and I'm. Trying to make sure I dip into a very clean one. I don't want any of that dark uh, to come out in this. Actually, I think that's okay. I think that kind of works. Sure, <laughs> Eliza, you're saying sure. Sure, it's somebody else's fault, right? Sure. Or, or were you saying, sure, sure, you'll step up and take the blame if it turns out badly? Oh, I think that's going to I think that's going to work out. That's not a whole lot of color there, but I think that's going to be just enough. 
uh, to show that, that little bit of dark there. And I think should probably just there. Just connect that those areas. Oh, okay. And under the neck <laughs> looks really good. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there because if if I do more on this, then I know I'm just at this point it's gonna be just futzing with it. And who knows what's going to happen there. I'm going to sign it right there. Ah, that's going to mark my being done. And I'm going to talk about some good and some bad from this. So I'm, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking at it. And quite honestly, I thought this guy was going to be a little easier to paint. Um, as it turns out... Uh, he's a little more difficult than I thought. And I'm not exactly sure that this last little bit helped me out. But I think part of what threw me off with this is the reference photo uh, back here. He obviously has some white on his back or very light back here. And I wanted to make sure I got that and did that justice. Uh, from the uh, reference photo, but there's, <laughs> it's hard for me to wrap my mind around, there shouldn't be a whole lot of light back here because this should all be in shadow, so this should be darker. So I think that's why I have this weird uh, line here. Having said that, um, it's a little guy, and little, little guys look like all kinds of things. I think this little shadow got to be a little too dark, but darkening the face here uh, and up around, I think, really helped to alleviate that. I like that little red flint there. And I like his wing over here. That little bit of blue that's in it, I think, really does set it off. Uh, I could have made this little line a little smaller. Right, I I wanted to make sure I left a little area there between the wing and the and his back. I think if I don't actually mention it, nobody would actually even notice that. And then I do like the little bit of blue shading over here, a little cooler color, a little bit warmer color over here. I probably could have made this just a bit darker, but I don't think it detracts not being quite dark enough from any from anything. So uh, I'm totally happy with that. I'm happy with the way he turned out. I think he looks great. Uh, I like I like I like the neck here. You say the neck looks good. I like this. Love this pop of color. You look at this and you don't even notice this guy down here. Your eye just goes zoop right up to that pop of color right there. So um, I'm really excited about it. So that's what I have for you for this, well, I almost said Thursday, this Wednesday evening. Um, uh, next Wednesday, I think I'll do, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll tackle a landscape next Wednesday. I've got a whole phone full of photos from my area. They are all beachy type, most of them are beachy type areas. I think before we move fully into the holiday weekend we could probably do one of those um and we'll see how that turns out anyways i want to say thank you liza Susie, dana natalie uh guillermo who else was here uh, dana dana Susie, margaret was here uh duck was here earlier uh, thirsty for a brew was here right at the beginning with some jokes I don't know. I hope I didn't miss anybody. I'm sure I did. Thank you all for joining me and making my Wednesday evening in the studio so fun and inviting. I had a great time. I hope you guys all had a great time too. And we will see you back here next Wednesday, 730 Pacific. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.